Survivor Chapter 22. So a zillion killer bees buzz into Dallas, Texas at 10 past 8 on Sunday morning. On schedule, right on schedule. This is despite the fact I only had a crummy 15% marketplace of the television audience for my spot. The next week, the network slots me for a full minute. And some heavy hitters, the drug companies, the car makers, the oil and tobacco conglomerates are lining up as definite Definite may be sponsors, if I can come up with an even bigger miracle. For all the wrong reasons, the insurance companies are invested, or interested. Between now and next week, I'm on the road making weeknight appearances in Florida. It's the Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, Miami circuits. It's the Tender Branson Miracle Crusade. One night each. My miracle minute, that's what the agent and the networks want to call it. Well, it takes about zero effort to produce. Someone points a, a camera at you with your comb with your hair combed and a tie around your neck and you look somber and talk straight into the lens the Ipswich Point Lighthouse will topple tomorrow next week the Mannington Glacier in Alaska will collapse and capsize a cruise ship that, that's sightseeing too close the week after that mice carrying a deadly virus will turn up in Chicago Tacoma and Green Bay this is exactly the same as being a, a television newscaster only before the fact the way I see the process b happening is I'll get Fertility to give me a couple dozen predictions at a time, and I'll just tape a season's worth of Miracle Minutes. With a year in the can, I'll be free to make personal experiences, endorse products, sign books, maybe do some consulting, do cameo walk-ins in movies and television. Don't ask me when, because I don't remember, but somewhere along the way, I keep forgetting to commit suicide. If the publicist ever put me killing my ever put killing myself on my schedule, I'd be dead. 7 p.m. Thursday, drink drain cleaner, no problem. But what the killer bees and the demands on my t with, but what with the killer bees and the demands on my time, I keep stressing about what if I can't find fertility again. This and my entourage is with me every step of the way. The team's always dogging, dogging me, the publicist, the schedulers, the personal fitness trainer. The orthodontist, the dermatologist, the dietitian, the killer bees got less accomplished than you'd expect. They don't kill anybody, but they get a lot of attention. Now I needed an encore, a collapsing stadium, a mining cave-in, a train de derailment. The only moment I've, I've ever alone is when I, I go sit on the toilet. And even, when I, even then I'm surrounded. Fertility is nowhere. In almost every public men's room, there's a hole chipped in the wall between one toilet stall and the next. This is chipped through solid wood an inch thick by somebody with just fit their fingernails. This is done over days or months at a time. You see these holes scratched through marble, through steel, as if someone in prison is trying to escape. The hole is only big enough to look through or talk or put a finger through or a tongue or a penis and escape just that little bit at a time. What people call these openings is glory holes. It's the same as where you'd find a vein of gold, where you'd find glory. I'm on a toilet in the Miami airport and right at my elbow there's the hole in the stall wall and all around the hole are messages left by men who sat there before me. John M. was here 3-14-64. Carl B. was here January 8, 1976. Epitaphs. Some of them are scratched here fresh. Some are covered up but scratched so deep they're still re readable under decades of paint. Here are the shadows left behind of a thousand moments, a thousand moods of needs traced there on the wall by men who are gone. Here's the record of being here, of their being here, their visit, their passing. Here's what the caseworker would call a primary source document, a history of the unacceptable. By here tonight, be here tonight for a free blowjob, Saturday, June 18th, 1973. All this is scratched in the wall. Here are words without pictures, sex without names, pictures without words. Scratched here is a naked woman with her long legs spread wide, her round staring breasts her long flowing hair and no face. Squirting huge teardrops toward her hairy vagina is a s severed penis as big as a man. Heaven, the words say is, is all you can eat pussy buffet. Heaven is getting fucked up the ass. Go to hell, faggot, been there. Go suck shit, done that. There's only a few of the voices around me when a real voice, a woman's voice, whispers, you need another disaster, don't you? The voice is coming through the hole, but when I look, all you can see are two lipstick lips, red lips, white teeth, a flash of wet tongue says, I knew you'd be here, I know everything, fertility. At the hole now is a plain gray colored eye made big with blue, sh eye sh eye shadow, with blue shadow and eyeliner and blinking lashes heavy with mascara. The pupil pulse is large and then small. 
Then the mouth appears to say, don't sweat it. Your plane will be delayed for another couple hours. On the wall next to the mouth it says, I suck and swallow. Next to that it says, I only want to love her if she just give me the chance. There's a poem that starts, warm inside you is the love. The rest of the poem is washed down the wall and erased by ejaculate. The mouth says, I'm here on an assignment. It must be an evil job. It's my, it's my evil job, she says. It's the heat. It's not something we talk about. She says, I don't want to talk about it. She, uh, congratulations, I whisper. About the killer me's, I mean. Scratched on the wall is, what do you call a Cretish girl who goes down? Dead. What do you call a Cretish fag who takes dick up the ass? The mouth says, you need another disaster, don't you? More like 15 or 20, I whisper. No, the mouth says. You're turning out just like every guy I've ever trusted, she says. You're greedy. I just want to save people. You're a greedy pig. I just want to save people from disasters. You're just a dog's doing a trick. This is only so I can kill myself. I don't want you dead. Why? Why? What? Why does she want me alive? Is it because she likes me? No, the mouth says. I don't hate you, but I need you. But she doesn't like me. The mouth says, do you have any idea how boring it is to be me? To know everything? To see everything coming from a million miles away? It's getting unbearable. And it's not just me. The mouth says, we're all bored. The wall says, I fuck Sandy Moore. All around that, ten others have scratched me too. Someone else is scratched. Has anybody here not fucked Sandy Moore? Next to that, it's scratched. I haven't. Next to that, it's scratched. Faggot. We all watch the same television programs, the mouse says. We all hear the same things on the radio. We all repeat the same talk to each other. The, there are no surprises left. There's just more of the same. Reruns. Inside the hole, the red lips say, We all grew up with the same television shows. It's like we all have the same artificial memories implants. We remember... Almost none of our real childhoods, but we remember everything that happened to sitcom families. We have the same basic goals. We all have the same fears. The lips say the future is not bright. Pretty soon, we all have the same thoughts at the same time. We'll be in perfect unison, synchronized, united, equal, exact, the way ants are, insectile, sheep. Everything is so derivative. A reference to a reference to a reference. The big question people ask is, isn't, what's the nature of existence? The mouth says, the big question people ask is, what's that from? I listened at the hole the way I listened to people confess over the telephone. The way I listened at Crips for signs of life. I asked, so why does she need me? Because you grew up in a different world, the mouth says. Because if anybody's going to surprise me, it's going to be you. You're not part of the mass culture, not yet. You're my only hope of seeing anything new. You're the magic prince that can't that can break the spell of boredom. This trance of day after day sameness, been there, done that. You're a control group of one. But no, I whisper, I'm not all that different. Yes, you are, the mouse says, and you're staying different is my only hope. So give me some predictions. No, why not? Because I'll never see you again. The world of people will eat you up and I'll lose you. From now on, I'll give you one prediction each week. How? This way, the mouse says, just like, just the, like right now. And don't worry, I'll find you. Stay tuned till for next time. <laughs>